I would say hello host post key. All right, it's recording. Welcome to Exotic Astrology, ladies and gentlemen. And today it is my great pleasure to. Ah, uh, so why this is okay? All right, so today is very happy day for me because I was waiting to do this from long, long, long time. And finally, today I have got chance to invite my friend. His name is Prashant Mandal, and he is doing MBA in the Indian Institutes of Management, Bangalore, which is one of the, or perhaps the top three colleges for doing MBA in India, and one of the very best colleges even in this world. Yes, and he is an exceptionally talented person. <laughs> he has also done his bachelor's in mechanical engineering. from the indian institutes of guwahati uh, and then later on he went to do job in a company called metlok and then later on he cracked cat and he is now in the indian institutes of management bangalore yes therefore i know him from last 10 years almost <laughs> yeah 10 so, yeah 10 years yeah 10 years. so we met uh, when we started our 11th standard and then from that time onwards we had become very good friends now you may be thinking that why have i invited this person here oh yes i know maybe he is from i am bangalore yes that's why i have invited no no that's not the main reason that is also one of the reasons but the main reason why i have invited him here is because he is uh, very much connected to spiritual practices and recently he has also left uh, eating meat paying heed to the animal killings which are happening and he has a lot of knowledge from the scriptures like the ramayana the mahabharat and today as in this playlist the name is spirituality for teenagers yes so now this man is in that position where <laughs> every teenager of my country india aspires to be yes most of the teenagers that i know they want to be uh, doing their bachelors in iit and then they want to do their masters in i am yes most of them up, uh, unless you have chosen different domains like medical or arts or commerce okay even commerce people are doing uh, their mba here in i am so he is at the pinnacle of success of materialistic civilization and now very soon he is going to uh, start uh, working again he is going to get a job of course very nice job his placements are already on the corner so without any further delay i would let him start speaking so today's topic will be focused on teenagers and we will focus on different lessons spiritually and overall how we can improve our life because we are also somewhat in our teenage we are in our 20s right <laughs> so i want him i want that the teenagers see him as a role model and he will share lessons from uh indian institutes of management bangalore and he will share what has improved uh, what what things he has done to improve his life and how he has maintained his spiritual commitments etc and how what advice does he want to give to the youth of india and to the youth of every country of course so without any further delay i will stop speaking now enough of the introduction and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him today definitely <laughs> all right so prasan please start the mic is yours i will hear now okay thank you am i audible yeah almost <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay uh, thank you very much bhavajit uh, for that uh, long introduction i <laughs> very humble of you and thank you very much for inviting me to your channel pleasure uh, is all mine <laughs> so yes i have uh, known him uh, this person does not like to talk about himself much but i'll tell you uh, how did we bond together so well as he said we have known each other for uh, yeah it will be nearly 10 years we uh did uh, we met when we were in our high higher high school class high 11. secondary high secondary yeah high secondary yeah so this person was uh 
so this person was uh, so the i'll tell you a very interesting story of how we uh, bonded well so this person used to watch movies a lot before i don't know how it is now <laughs> so we were talking about this movie called 300 uh, it's a very famous hollywood movie and uh, suddenly we uh, you know from the movie we went deep into it and you know started talking about greek mythology and the characters and then we uh, went into indian epics you know this person told me that he used to watch uh, ramanand sagar's krishna when he was uh, shri krishna when the tv serial when he was young i was like okay <laughs> i also watched that it was one of my favorite uh, tv serials so that is how we got to bond together and uh, yeah we have we share a lot of common interests uh, so this friendship uh, by the grace of god has continued till today <laughs> it will continue lifelong oh my god that <laughs> then i am then i am satisfied <laughs> uh, this person is really a very humble man and uh, i was very happy when he started his uh, youtube channel uh, and uh, now that he has given me a chance to <laughs> to come to his channel i i what can i say i thank you from the core of my heart that's yes, all i can pleasure is all mine <laughs> <laughs> so um, what do i say that he has introduced me as this uh how do i put it some demi god you know <laughs> I, I, i am bangalore and iit guwahati okay <laughs> thank you very much but um, today uh, the topics that i'd be talking about they they okay they apply to and they come from my experiences uh in iit and i am not only in these uh, institutes but life in general and i think uh, that uh, applies to the general society as well because see an iit and and an iim and does not come from some other planet and land here and uh, is he is not an alien he is just he is a part of the general society and i think the problems that we face uh, are more or less the same any person faces the same kind of problems that we face so the topics that i'll be talking i think that they apply to the general mass uh, society as well and uh, well i'll start lately there has been a lot of negativity around uh, i i am uh, recently two students uh, committed suicide uh, that news came up and then there are a lot of articles on the internet you know how stressful it is uh, you know the, we don't get time we uh, we uh, we are made to work so hard for no reason at all then there is depression then there is this thing and that thing whatever n number of things are being written on the internet but uh, let me tell you it is not all that bad <laughs> uh see it is all about perspective uh one of our professor i still remember uh, he was our professor in, when we were in our first year he told us that you you people complain about all this there is so much stress there is so much uh you know pressure to perform and everything and you people complain about it but then you are the people who chose it we did not tell you ki you know come to i am bangalore and you know study here you made a conscious decision you uh you gave the exam and you cracked it you came it is your your decision. action action decision whatever so now you cannot blame that you know oh this is you should have known about it you should have asked people you should have inquired about it you should have known about it and after that you should have made a conscious decision 
uh, as it is <laughs> said in the gita right karman nivadhikaraste maapaleshu kadarchana how, how, how the action is the result is the same so you have performed the action of cracking cat coming to imb now you have to face whatever is there <laughs> and so it is all about perspective basically some people cannot get that thing in their head that uh, oh you know we have cracked this exam and we have achieved this now we are set for life so that does not happen life is a continuous journey and most importantly what i feel is that you are in a an institute you have to follow whatever the system is whatever the rules are there you cannot you cannot run away from it it, it was your choice so some people realize it some people don't so that is why this dilemma continuously uh, troubles us and uh, but then uh, life is not all that bad here yes yeah, yes i will not say these things that are written are wrong there, of course there is stress you know it's a management it's a b school after that you'll go to the corporate world there is bigger stress so you know corporates everybody knows how it is it, it's all stressful you need to slog a lot and uh, you know these things are there so i will not deny that all those things are wrong but then uh, the thing is that you see you would be a manager and one of the things which no b school teaches but every manager everyone in fact not even not an i am student or management student everyone you need to manage your time you need to manage your time efficiently you need to set your priorities straight ki this is what i want to do this is what i don't want to do uh, and then you know efficiently do your work by managing your time and many people don't realize it that is why they think that you know it is all so stressful that these things will be there you can't help it so but then i there are some of the best i have met some of the best brains in this country uh in my college uh, i have seen how people you know they juggle between work and their personal commitments so well so that is what that is what my first um, i would say uh learning that i have uh, gathered ki basically you need to have a perspective that uh, things you need to analyze that uh, thing analyze things that from your angle basically that this is important for me this is not so this prioritize things properly prioritize things properly and that is that is why they say uh, that you you may have many priorities but you should have a priority <laughs> <laughs> okay that is that is a beautiful statement <laughs> yeah so that is uh, that is what i would like to start with Uh, that it is not all that bad don't go by all the negativity that is going on around these days uh at the end of the day you work hard you will succeed you set your priorities straight you can manage everything <laughs> so that is what i wanted to start my uh, this top like lecture with second thing which bothers me about people and the system i am not i am system in, in people in general i have seen that people are running after things after wrong things basically uh here especially you know in the past one and a half years that i have been here uh, people are running after marks you know uh, Ninety out of hundred. No, no, no. I left to get ninety-five out of hundred. Ninety-five in ninety-five. Also, they are not satisfied. They want more. They want more. They want the best job. They want the uh, best pay package. They want everything. The competition, that competitiveness is. I won't say that is bad, but that is being channeled to a very in a in a wrong path. I would say because. these kinds of things will never make you happy these uh, these are material achievements which will never make you happy you might get a 1 crore package uh, 1 crore rupees job but then someone else will 
earn two crore rupees, then you will think, oh, this person is earning more than me. I need to surpass him. I need to, I need to be more uh, competitive. I need to work more harder. These things will never give you satisfaction. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, all your expectations cannot be met. And people in general have lofty expectations. You know. I need to be first in my class. I need to get A in all my subjects. Uh, as I said, I need to have the best job job after graduating. Uh, and then slowly, the, those things fade away. I mean, if I take my example, uh, I'll admit here, I, have, I have was a good, I was a good student, so to say, quote unquote. Uh, I used to get good marks, but then now that I realize, I don't even remember what marks I got in my tenth or. Uh, you know, th those things don't resonate with me anymore. Those things are not important to me anymore. I have moved on. I have, uh, you know, those days are gone. Like, I, if I would have been in that state, you know, oh, I, I was an overachiever. I need to continue doing that. Then I would have been also one of those depressed <laughs> candidates. <laughs> So at some point of time, some uh, people have to realize that all your expectation, you cannot have it all at once. Some things you need to be very realistic. Okay, this is my capability. This is what I can do. This much I, I can work hard till this point. After that, it's all whatever God decide, decides, whatever result. Uh, I get and that is that I should accept it wholeheartedly and I have seen that people don't realize this people have become so you know so competitive especially in India I don't know about other countries uh, especially this is true and I think somewhere uh, we have been ingrained to follow that uh, you know since uh, since our childhood our parents, our relatives say, you know, you need to come first in the class, otherwise you are, you are no one. I think that that has been ingrained into us. That is why we cannot, we are very afraid of failure, I would say. And our benchmarks of failure are very, very high. You know, if I come second in the class, oh, I am gone. I am, I am nobody. We, they, they say, oh, he's a loser, she's a loser. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, there are movies being made on this, you know, the, uh, somebody getting 95%, he is scolded by his parents. Why didn't you get 99%? Why 95%? So we have, so over the course of time, we develop these unrealistic expectations about us. And that continues. And in a and in a B school, you have the best brains of the country. That becomes even more magnified. Your classmate, I might be someone, and my classmate might be ten times more uh, capable, in you know, intelligent than me. So I have to accept that. Okay, he is more intelligent than me. This thing, people, uh, I have seen that. They cannot really, you know, uh, digest. Get, get, digest exactly. Not so, digest. I would say they can't accept the fact that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessary that everybody is good in everything. That's not possible. Exactly. Exactly. We have to know where our strengths are, and then we proceed accordingly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, even Bhagavad Gita, there is a shloka. I, I'm very bad at shloka, so I don't remember. But then I remember the meaning. Uh, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna that, uh, you know, uh, you do your work according to karma yoga. You do your work. with You don't uh, attach yourself to anything. You keep continue to do your work. I think it was in 48, uh, something. I don't remember the exact uh, canto. Uh, so you do your work without any achievements, uh, sorry, attachment, expectation, 
expectations attachments basically so that is what i mean uh, you know, we have these unrealistic expectations about ourselves and then they don't get fulfilled and people go into depression people uh, you know people are uh, they uh, commit suicides and all in extreme cases so i think uh, my advice is that you should know where you are where you are who you are basically should yeah exactly you should introspect that uh, this is what i can do this is my capability these are my strengths and okay at this having this level i can perform up to this and after that whatever happens that is god's will i cannot i don't have any say in it this is the optimum i can perform don't set really high goals that you know oh i have to uh, you know achieve that i mean okay i am not uh being negative i am not being pessimistic here by saying oh you should you should not set goals for yourself at all definitely one should definitely try to improve oneself one should definitely try to be better than what he was yesterday yes but that does not mean that uh, <laughs> uh you know your uh expectations are like mount everest and you cannot even climb uh, you know a uh, hill a uh, hillock you can say and you are expecting the no i'll climb mount everest that does not happen that you is should... why they say the only person you need to defeat is the one you were yesterday exactly 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 we can improve ourselves yes but uh, we should not get too much obsessed that you know i need to i set some high goal and i will achieve that by destroying myself you know that 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 does not happen and one needs to realize this very and i am i'm lucky that i realized that very early in my life a uh, lot of people i mean if you talk to people they will say ki uh, you know they will lament ki oh in this in this particular subject i did not get marks so i am upset like <laughs> okay you you studied you that time you could not probably write the answer so you got less marks so what's the big deal i mean that is not the end of life right <laughs> you try to perform better next time so that is what i would like to say ki you should need to set realistic expectations about yourself uh you need to introspect that what you who you are basically and accordingly you can uh you know perform your duties yeah that's why my guru also always says that do your best and leave the rest god god will take care of the rest <laughs> how much how much ever you deserve as per as your karma exactly. that much result you will get but okay. don't become obsessed ki, oh i could not get that not at all not at all and even if i have seen people get something which they don't deserve they cannot maintain it exactly yes exactly. then that becomes like a uh, heli scenario for them because mm-hmm. they did not take the effort to achieve that and then yes, by some yes. other wrong means even if they achieve it mm-hmm. then later on they will end up causing distress for themselves and for family and they will bring bad name to everybody else exactly 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 i have seen i have seen instances uh, where uh, you know people have not used fair means and achieved success but that, that that does not stay that does not stay for long i mean god is everywhere like uh, yours truly says to everybody right god is everywhere so god is everywhere you can get him but he is also watching you <laughs> <laughs> you you cannot get away for long ultimately at the end of the day if you are ethical if you are diligent if you work to the best of your capability you will get rewarded otherwise that is not sustainable uh, if you use do things by other means other means i will not say wrong okay. means i'll be very politically correct here <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh, when i was doing my studies in business domain here in gottingen okay there was one professor who uh, came and said the best answer 
in mbas it depends <laughs> <laughs> it's we have heard that in every subject and every class <laughs> it depends <laughs> so your professor is very correct it depends <laughs> so that is what i wanted to say regarding uh, you know one of the things that i uh, have experienced and uh, the second thing i wanted to say is that uh, and this is something which really you know bothers me uh, as a as an i am student uh, as a society also i have seen you know outside people also do the same sometimes many times in fact and that is uh, i don't know what is wrong what has gone wrong but people have become very insensitive these days i'll give you one particular instance uh, everybody likes to party right and especially in a b school to <laughs> uh you know corporate culture you know party so everybody likes to party and uh, what happens is that saturdays and sundays are uh, holidays basically you don't have classes so there is this concept of friday night <laughs> so <clears throat> sorry so thank uh, so yeah friday night as i was saying uh, the people love to party and uh, we have i have my batchmates here who party sometimes some of some of the people and uh, you know there there is a group of people who gather and there is some music system there is food there is liquor uh, nowadays liquor has been banned in our campus so there is no liquor <laughs> but pre- i am saying previously but whatever that is not that is not important that is just the detail so the thing is they party uh, the music system is on at it at full volume and uh, i have seen i have observed that the volume of the music system is in is in no comparison to the volume of the people present i mean i don't know what is this Uh, logic or whatever what is this new trend that has come you know that uh, if you are partying here let's say my voice should be heard 10 blocks away people should know that i am partying you know screaming at the top of their voice now what my take away i am not saying it is right wrong i am not judging anybody to be very honest uh let me be very clear on that i am not judging anybody and i know these people they are very good people what what no 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 they are they are, some of them are my very good friends but then i have and i have talked about it to them also uh and a number of occasions that see it is not wrong to party you enjoy party what is party you are enjoying your yeah, enjoyment uh, you are okay there is there are no classes so okay we are it's so much stressful so we are taking our stress out by partying by enjoying what i am concerned is that okay you are partying in your circle what about the people who are and you are living in a hostel you are not living at your home so there are people living around you right some of them might be sleeping some of them might be studying so i don't understand that what is this need to you know to scream at the top of your voice i mean you are enjoying among your group you laugh you whatever you dance you sing whatever but that be sensitive towards those people also right and uh, this is one thing that really bothers me and as i said i have spoken about it to some of them and they acknowledge but then again back to the pavilion as they say <laughs> it falls in deaf ears i will <laughs> i will keep it at that yeah and then that's what i'm also surprised to see that 
if people are behaving like this now you may somebody may say that oh it's okay you know they are just having party sometimes it's not a big deal but the but the interest but the important thing here to notice these people will become the future leaders of the society exactly yes. exactly they will be in big big corporate post positions and uh, in uh, areas where they can affect thousands of people so if they are not sensitive to the people around them exactly what level of sensitivity will they show to uh, other people when they have a thousand yes. people working around them exactly so, that is that is why they say these days that the corporate people the bosses they are very much inconsiderate towards others whatever i am not saying of corporate in any area any even, area any even if they get married mm-hmm. now then ah, they, 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 the children may face the same problem they may be insensitive towards the children so mm-hmm. just because we are in a big uh, school like this or we are in such a big institute it doesn't mean that we can do anything we like yes that is not very correct so they should learn to discipline themselves that's very important because they are going to sit in big big chairs tomorrow <laughs> exactly exactly they they are going to be they are going to occupy top positions in their wherever they go so and uh, they so that is that is what concerns me that is what bothers me really i mean they are very good people but then uh, these kinds of things they do knowingly unknowingly i don't know uh, that that is that that affects that person itself as you said tomorrow tomorrow they they would be bosses of some company and they would have people under them working for them so and as you said some bosses that you hear now they are very inconsiderate they are very rude they don't care you know they are workers whatever business ha ah, that kind of an attitude and then there are uh, bosses who are so uh, good to their subordinates that, that that thing is also there so i that that thing concerns me this insensitivity that has creeped into our society and what to speak about i am i mean in general also uh, the other day i was uh, watching this uh, video this uh, it came on one of the news channels and that uh, a person was stabbed or something i don't know some uh, fight or a robbery i don't remember that person was stabbed and he was left there on the road and uh, nobody came to help him so we have become so you know immune to all this you know so we don't have that sensitivity anymore false immunity As, yeah yeah exactly we don't have that sense now the reason can be anything i'm not going into reasons but then somewhere i think that things have not gone the right way and this sen- insensitivity has creeped into our minds and uh, i think that is a serious uh, issue which affects which affects your personal life as well uh, you know there are so many uh, i get to hear you know my friends uh, their relationships have broken why because oh he is he or she whoever is inconsiderate you know uh, he, he does not care if i he does not message me uh, he or she does not message me does not call me that is really bad that is that should not happen actually and uh, that is what i s- tell the people here also to okay you are parting but then be a bit considerate <laughs> be a bit considerate to others i you are in a social space you are not in your, you are not in your home and social space is it's an educational you are not in a club club so you can do anything you want you are not yeah, in a club you are here to learn and study right uh, yeah that is that is our primary purpose right uh, you can party i am not averse to party and uh, and my, if i if you ask my definition of a party i will sit with four friends and we will talk about life that is my kind of party <laughs> so we do not disturb anyone we do not intrude into any anybody's space but then people have become so insensitive that uh, they don't care 
we are doing you know you know what 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 happens to someone else so that that kind of an attitude uh, is not good actually that is what i am concerned about i because they are the future we are the future of this country we will be occupying top post and if this kind of insensitivity prevails among us then that is not a healthy sign which i see so my advice to people is that uh, you know do whatever do what your heart desires that's okay it is your free will you can do whatever you want but then you realize that uh, you are not alone <laughs> there are others around you there is a society around you there are people be considerate be a bit sensitive towards others towards others feelings towards others personal spaces uh, don't be so over you know puffed up as they say uh, yeah that uh, you don't make a you don't you for, forget creating a distinction between you know your uh, space and someone else and, and then somebody might get beaten up for that <laughs> so that is what i uh, i wanted to say regarding this so i do you, do you have any experiences you are in germany i mean germany is a party <laughs> uh, uh, you can share yeah luckily my experience for germany has been quite good till now i mean on on a personal level on a social level okay because they have bit strict rules here like for example i am sitting in this place and in front of me there is a place where you can party but you cannot on music after 10 pm there oh and you can only party there nice nice, nice. okay so uh, it's called like restricted enjoyment as they say <laughs> Mm, that that is good that is yeah good. and now also if i open the door i will hear or oh, some somebody is playing music somebody is doing anything mm. or there is another room here below mm. the ground floor where you can party okay that is like very much uh, scientifically made so that the music doesn't go up mm-hmm. and even if somebody goes and complains to the house master then you can't play that so uh, in my experience it is like people don't party much here in the homes or in the mm-hmm. hostels like i am also staying in a hostel they mm-hmm. go out more to pubs okay okay yeah, so uh, that is quite good i think in that area yeah that that is good that is good that is yeah but again when i was in india when i was in south india in srm in my first year <laughs> okay <laughs> that is like okay. <laughs> one empire in itself i was staying with uh, seven eight uh, people there and they used to do the same things they used to start the music at 1:30 in the night oh my god that is terrible and then i used to request one of my south indian friends that please sleep in my room at morning 5 o'clock i will go and sleep at your place at 12 o'clock those were like days of hell which i have spent <laughs> 2010 july to 2011 january oh so god. yeah my experience with germany has been quite good but yes some disappointments in india of course <laughs> yeah, that so is what's the, the what's the next thing you are going to speak now hmm so next thing what do i speak about you said uh, you will speak on non vegetarian food <laughs> ah okay non vegetarian food yeah maybe you can speak a bit loudly uh, so if i have to summarize in one line this person is responsible <laughs> <laughs> uh no i uh, jokes apart uh, i think i should give a background uh, otherwise uh, you won't understand people won't understand uh i am a bengali uh so bengalis are famous for having fish having meat you know uh, hardcore non vegetarians as they say so <laughs> so i was also um, you know i was also born brought up like that but fortunately my mother uh, is not a very uh, i would say 
I mean, she is a non-vegetarian, but then but she's not a very big fan of, you know, oh, chicken. But once a week, it's fine. Or twice a week, it's fine. Occasionally, sometimes. Occasionally, sometimes. So, luckily, uh, I would say, fortunately, uh, I was, you know, born and brought up like that. I also developed that thing, okay, non-veg is there, so it is there. Why to why do people make such a big fuss about it? Like it's it's after all it's food. Uh, but I liked it. <laughs> I will be very honest. Uh, back then, <laughs> but then I was uh, I was born and brought up in uh, like in brought up in such a way that that thing never went into me that oh you know non vegetarian food is the only food in this world like people say now. Uh, this is a common thing in India. Uh, people, when they hear you are a vegetarian, you are a vegetarian. Okay, where do you? You don't eat uh, chicken. You, you eat grass. Eat... Grass khata hai grass. Ah, grass foods. Where do you get your protein from? <laughs> like... The million-dollar lie of the meat industry: no protein. I am like, and this. These are the kind of questions I face now after having left. <laughs> you are under attack, like I was seven years back. <laughs> this is a lifelong attack. You don't know what you have done, so people cannot digest that. How can a person stay without eating it? So, oh my congratulations! God. Oh my you will be under attack for the next fifty years. Okay. Oh my God! Yeah, and uh, I have realized this. And nowadays, whenever somebody asks me anything, I just smile. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that is what that is what I should adopt as well. Yes, I don't get proteins, I don't get minerals, I don't get vitamins. The only thing I get is happiness. <laughs> <laughs> that is Except a happiness. Answer. Everything you get, right? But you don't get happiness. That's the only thing which I get. You don't get happiness. You don't get. Yeah. So, what motivated you to give up this? I mean, apart from all this uh, religious, scriptural things, yes. Yeah, religious, scriptural things definitely yes. Uh, after uh, you know, starting to I, I started uh, you know studying religious scriptures and texts very late. Uh, well, I came into contact very uh, late in uh, my life, uh, nearly two three years back I think. So as I started studying and. Uh, as I said, I had no, uh, I was not obsessed with non-vegetarian food. So, and uh, I've always loved vegetarian food since I was a kid. I've always loved it. And I, when I introspected, I realized that when you eat non-veg, there is a kind of agitation in your body. You know, that that this in a protein. <laughs> yeah. That proteins, I don't know how much protein, I still don't know how much protein is there in any food. I just have food, that's all. Food is required for living. I, I have food. Vegetarian food, of course. But then, it creates a kind of agitation in your body. You know, that's strength. Uh, like an unutilized kick, basically. Kick, basically. You get very, I don't know, I might be, uh, this is my experience. I cannot say of other people. There are people who don't get this. I have heard. But then this is what my experience was. That uh, I used to get very, uh, you know, I used to sweat a lot. I used to get agitated and all those things. And uh, so in due course of time, and, uh, you know, I started realizing that. And of course, when I, eat normal vegetarian food, pure, you know, just lentils and rice. This is a very common dish in India, dal chawal, which is said, dal chawal roti. <laughs> so, when I used to have that, I used to feel very satisfied. Yes, I have, I have eaten to my heart's content. My, my, I am contented. I am satisfied. That feeling I never had. Whenever I had non non vegetarian, in spite of having, in spite of liking it, 
I'll say. Because I said I will be very honest. I like I like to non vegetarian food. Like I was like any other yeah, person. Yeah, I also. Ah, you also yes. You were also in that phase. So I liked that. But then this is a bodily thing that happened, you know. And slowly and steadily that started, you know. And I I did not mention a very important incident in my life. Uh, two years back I was. diagnosed with this uh, disease called uh, itp uh, it's a very long name uh, you can search google itp it's some immunogenic per thrombo something purpura idiopathic sorry not immune <laughs> I, yeah i remember now idiopathic thrombo something so that uh, what happens is that the platelet content of your blood goes down so and platelets are the comp- uh, the things in your blood which help to in your blood clotting let's say blood comes out of your yes any part so that blood stops after some time who stops it platelets mm-hmm. so what happens if you don't have platelets in your blood it will continue bleeding let's say there is a cut blood won't stop so i was i was suffering from internal bleeding i was admitted to the hospital i was given doses of platelets medicines whatever i was treated and in that due course of that treatment i was also advised by my doctor that uh, you know you have uh, developed some ulcer problem also in your oh. you should avoid spicy food you know non vegetarian if you can avoid that is good so that was another what do i say that prompted me more that that was another trigger i would say uh, i was already contemplating on i was in two minds at that time whether i should have non veg or not have it i used to eat chicken i used to uh, the, the normal life was going and i was contemplating on you know whether i should quit or not quit uh, then this incident happened and this i was like no no hanky panky anymore you know uh, even uh, i it was god's way of saying you know you enough is you, enough uh, you read all my you read all my words ha huh? you are still eating non veg ha huh? let me <laughs> let me <laughs> give you a blow yeah let me show you the mirror so yes i was shown the mirror and uh, yeah even with my elder brother this problem was there when he was at the age of oh okay. 17 mm-hmm. uh, he was diagnosed with uh, that he has to remove his gall bladder at the age of oh. 17 okay so much meat he used to eat my god okay. he used to eat pork also and chicken also mutton also and now his situation is so bad that he cannot even eat things like milk besan and so many other things because his system has been damaged completely the digestive system oh that and yesterday really he sad. told me that he is not able to go to office because he is having so much stomach stomach problem so that is very unfortunate and i am very i am feeling very angry on the doctor i don't know what kind of doctors are there <laughs> the last two years back when he had all these problems then the doctor gave him a list of 10 things not to eat yes there are some some things like gram flour which is besan in india uh, then uh-huh. there is maida Black. which is now white flour white flour yes then yes. they they said you can't eat milk you can't eat cheese you can't eat this you can't eat that and surprisingly there was nothing mentioned about meat there <laughs> okay so okay. now again i don't know i am not insulting the doctor but i'm just thinking i mean how can it be possible that uh milk is bad for you or besan or anything but if those things are bad then how in the universe is it possible that meat is not affecting you badly right <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is sometimes people take meat as just another food yes mm-hmm. okay you can eat meat but you can't eat those i'm like mm-hmm. seriously man the human body is not designed for eating meat because uh, the animals which eat meat uh, mm. they 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 their the excreta is cleaned from their body very fast because uh, they have they store all their the size of their intestines is very small 
they don't okay. have intestines like us you know mm-hmm. like we have large intestines where the food stays for very long time and then there's degradation in the colon and you cannot absorb the nutrients and then mm-hmm. the cancer and then there's so much adrenaline which is there in the bodies of animals when they are killed yes so all that poison is going inside you yes and mm-hmm. in the scriptures say that you cannot take away the free will of a person to live yes 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 so that is the main reason bhagavatam says that is one of the four pillars of sin yes yes yes, yes, sin. yes it's yes. not that some hindu religious book is saying exactly exactly how will you feel that if i go and chop your head off you will probably not like it right <laughs> so that is why uh, when we are because scriptures say that if you touch water and you think you will not get wet that can't happen so <laughs> if you are if you are giving pain to others you will yes. definitely get pain oh my god yes 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 yes, yes. So, and uh, yeah well, whatever you said is correct uh, is very true and if you let's put aside the religious angle okay there are scriptures say whatever yes. scriptures say our uh, texts say all those things are there if you look at from a humanitarian from a, perspective also uh, from a material perspective yeah humanitarian or material perspective, there are thousands of uh, articles on internet that uh, meat consumption is uh, uh, directly affecting people's health It yeah, is affecting the environment, the greenhouse effect, and all ah, that. Ah, yeah, and environment. You know, there are campaigns. You know, to go vegan, not even vegetarian. Yeah. So, uh, in in that scenario, you know, you are, uh, you know, there are these people who say that you know, oh, how can we survive without non-vegetarian food? Yeah, and then people will say that oh. if you don't uh, uh, they say that oh you have to eat animals mm-hmm. say that uh, what what will happen if there are no food grains left then what will you eat then you must mm-hmm. eat animals but the funny thing is that scenario cannot rise because of one reason because of two okay. reasons one is mm-hmm. obviously that scenario will never come mm-hmm. but the second reason is even if that scenario comes mm-hmm. there will be no animals alive because they only eat grains right Oh, oh, oh yeah so if there are no grains how will you have animals to eat them because oh, they oh yeah exactly they uh-huh. they don't eat humans they eat grains so if there are no grains left that you have to eat animals so congratulations you will not even have animals to eat mm exactly exactly so exactly. that's a imaginary utopian scenario which people say exactly exactly so i'm very happy that now uh, you have finally uh, given up non veg <laughs> And thank you thank you so much i'm very happy that and, now in such a young age you could have done this yes. and so and many people they need uh, like even in case of my relatives my parents also now, even if i call my father now he will always say wow the fish was so tasty today <laughs> <laughs> even if i call my mother today na that day she was telling she went to uh, a wedding party and then i said Oh, what did you eat there? She said, "Wow, that mutton was so tasty, man. That mutton was like too good." And I was like, "My God! I mean, <laughs> we are not eating non-veg now at the prime of our youth, and then some people yeah. they somehow cannot leave. So, we should consider ourselves extremely fortunate that we are away from these wrong habits. Exactly. exactly. And God exactly. has blessed us definitely. Hmm. Definitely. 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 Otherwise, I have seen people. uh no even so many people i know that they are about to die in their death but still they are like i want to eat chicken i want to eat mutton this desire is so strong that they sometimes cannot let go of this during the last moments also yes i, I was speaking about yes you are very correct and i was speaking about that agitation thing in the beginning yeah. this is the kind of you know feeling that one develops you know oh, i can't survive without uh non vegetarian food without chicken without mutton without beef without pork whatever the meat the animal is not the important i cannot survive without non vegetarian food so this is the kind of agitation which develops and i would like to add one more thing which is very important it is mentioned in our scriptures that uh, vegetarian food is sattvic food satva guna satva guna and 
non vegetarian is tamas tamas tamasic food you and these kinds of things you know agitation desire you know on your death bed i like as you said this is pathetic man you are dying <laughs> still you wanted some you know you to non vegetarian food to consume this is terrible this is tamas tamasic guna you are giving to your body you know and uh, as that uh, you know if you develop you know sattvic guna by having sattvic food you are free from all this you know you are free from all this you are free from all this as you you are happy you are contented you are you know I, in fact i have myself realized i have myself experienced this whenever i have uh, sattvic food you know sattvic food what does it consume not less spicy a normal simple you know grains whatever i feel very much refreshed feel very much you know contented ki yes i have eaten which i never ever in my life never ever in my life felt when i was eating chicken i'd be very honest whenever i had chicken i was like i i, I should have had more of that why they gave only six pieces you know they should have given eight pieces there is this thing na you go to some restaurant you order chili chicken they give only four pieces are why did you give four pieces you should have given eight pieces yeah, i'd like to interrupt you here yes recently i was hearing something it's pertaining to this only now why why oh, okay. not more than this okay so uh, there was this person who was saying that suppose you have lost your mobile okay and you find it <laughs> okay then you don't go on searching again oh where is my mobile where is my mobile <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes you keep it in your pocket and you become peaceful mm-hmm. but if after eating six pieces again you are feeling oh i need more 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 that means you have not found the mobile yes <laughs> oh my god yes, yes just yes. a illusion that you have found mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that is why you are searching again and again Mm-hmm. so even after eating when your stomach is full i know people who stomach is full and they are about to vomit in fact in chennai there is this famous barbecue nation restaurant in most of the metros in india so mm-hmm. there i had gone there to eat one day with my friends and there i saw that uh, one of my friend he was eating 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 the buffet there were some 50 items he ate so much that he went out and vomited okay okay and then he mm-hmm. came again he ate again <laughs> oh, and then okay. he could not control his bowels he went to the toilet okay to the washroom and yeah okay. he went to the toilet again he came again he ate the third time and this time he was like finally i am satisfied <laughs> i was thinking this man is not eating to live actually Okay, living to eat. <laughs> yes, he's living to eat. Uh, Anyways, jokes apart, but that's very true. What you said, now you never feel yeah. satisfied. Right? You never, you never. I never had that feeling. To be very honest, uh, I used to like it, but then I used to think, you know, <laughs> there should have been more. You know, that feeling I don't have when I now when I eat uh, simple, as I said, dal chawal. i never have that feeling i am satisfied i am contented in that and uh, there is a very beautiful shloka also ki you know tatra sattva nirmalatva prakashayati anamayam when you develop sattvic guna when you have sattvic when you ingest sattvic food you develop sattvic guna that sattvic guna that helps you illuminate from within and that this feeling i have experienced that uh i have gained more clarity about things you know uh you know before what used to happen non veg uh, i had non veg i had chicken butter chicken uh, roti and chapati and butter chicken after that i'm gone i'm dead and another thing i used to uh, notice about myself is after you take non veg because that has so much of that na protein and that hard yeah, stuff exactly mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. feel so much thirsty oh yes oh yeah, you have to drink tons and tons and gallons tons of water and, oh my god yes not able to process okay. that 
so true so true no? so true so but now it is whenever i uh, eat lunch i rarely have any memory that oh my god i am feeling so thirsty now that lazy yeah, yeah, asna yeah. i want to drink gallons of water it doesn't happen like yeah, that yeah 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 you 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 put out a very brilliant observation yeah that same 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 yeah. i have the same experience now i don't feel of course you need to drink water <laughs> now people might think that when you start taking vegetarian food you lose your thirst yeah that, some the people case. some people who don't have brains to interpret they'll think like that okay uh so that is what i was saying that uh, uh now uh, i have developed more you know that clarity uh, very very clarity very steep stability uh, earlier i and especially there was a phase in my life i used to eat a lot of meat because that was the only thing available <laughs> so you go there in my undergraduation you go and you you have chicken ho hog like an animal basically you hog like an animal basically uh, not even an animal wild animal you know <laughs> wild boar wild boar or whatever so now so that that phase i remember and i remember those days that i used to not feel good so that feeling is now gone completely so scripturally and uh, so that is my i will not say advice i mean people can people will anyways eat what they what they want <laughs> so uh, but then it is just my my experience what my opinion i will say that uh, you know vegetarian food should be uh, adopted by everybody i mean if you if if you, if you even leave aside the relig- religious spiritual angle whatever you leave aside what scripture say forget it and there are campaigns going in the world you know meat consumption is affecting this planet is environmentally harmful And there are there, there is this actor na hollywood actor who what is his name titanic like leonardo dicaprio ah. he is one of the leading this thing uh, i have seen uh, you know against beef consumption uh, so from an environmental perspective also and from a health perspective also i mean i have seen people who are uh, you know hardcore meat eaters they develop all this uh, pathetic diseases i'll say they are not why are you harming yourself I mean, that yeah, is what i, I this uh, bollywood uh, actress i don't know she is acting in movies this but her name is aisha takia she had done okay. that movie na tarzan the wonder car ha 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 she yeah. also became vegan and now she has opened one restaurant also which is completely vegan it's like not vegetarian also it's completely in, in india yeah in in delhi or oh. bombay i think it's in bombay she has opened oh i did not know about this okay yeah recently i was seeing a video of her in youtube and some Achha. some regarding vegan food i was searching something then i saw mm-hmm. that everything is vegan even cakes and mm-hmm. anything there's no no animal meat there nothing is there so mm-hmm. very good you know there are so many people who are turning up these days and in mm-hmm. west, so many people have also turned vegetarian in fact the funny thing is in my dorm uh there are three girls and okay. you know, there are four girls out of them three are vegan <laughs> <laughs> okay and then there was one of my friend in india uh-huh. uh he's born in a so called brahmin family all right mm-hmm. and then uh when i said to him that i'm coming to germany then this fellow told me that oh you are going to die there in 6 months there's nothing vegetarian there and look here i am surviving from 3 years <laughs> <laughs> so my life is uh, presence is like the proof of a living nightmare for this person huh. and he doesn't even know that i don't drink if he comes to know maybe he will have a serious problem <laughs> he will <laughs> yeah he can't imagine of the idea that somebody is surviving in germany without uh, meat and wine because they always say that when there is a will there is a way yes exactly when when, exactly. when you want to do something you always find ways to do that exactly and when exactly. you don't want to do something you always find excuses exactly yes exactly so anyways yeah, just so would you like to give any last uh, advice or suggestion to the youth because this playlist is for the youth 
<laughs> for the youth um i would say how important uh, spiritual things are no, for the youth uh, i yeah i was coming to that i i think uh, now uh, the kind of the the direction in which people are going i think spirituality has become a very uh, important aspect which should be imbibed by everybody uh, irrespective of religion irrespective of caste creed whatever uh, when you and when you apply spiritual practices in your life you will notice a change uh, you will notice a big change in your life you will be able to see things very objectively i was mentioning at the beginning ki you should set your priorities straight and everything people can't do that i have seen people can't do that but when you take to spirituality when you uh, uh, you know when you are uh, you know following certain rules following certain practices they help you think more objectively about life which is very important uh, you know people just live they just exist they don't they, they are seeking happiness you know in uh, in places they they feel that they will get happiness there but that does not happen like that uh, i was talking about expectations and desires and everything so when you when you take to spirituality when you perform spiritual practices uh, then you know that that prioritization that you know that desire that that becomes very clear you you achieve a lot of clarity in your life so i would definitely advise the you uh, you know that uh, you know you should adopt spirituality into your lives i mean i am not saying you become a monk or something no and that is not my uh, advice uh you become that's a good thing but then, uh you know that 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 is let's be realistic uh, youth of today are very uh, not into all that but then at least you know if you do some basic practices like if you meditate for let's say 10 minutes in the morning 5 minutes let's say i you know one shloka from the gita or bible uh, or the quran ha uh, are bible i have it right now bible and gita both i read sometime i don't remember that's a different thing uh, i am working on that <laughs> so i am very terrible at all remembering shlokas i know the meaning but but i cannot quote the shloka whatever no, that is only required ha uh, let's keep it aside so if you do certain practices like let's say you do meditate new meditate for 5 10 minutes in the morning you do some some yoga you know some basic asana you do read a something read a gospel from the bible read an ayat from the quran or yes you know, you know quran is such a you know, there is so many there are so many good ayats in quran i mean after all you know <laughs> it is also a holy book you read a shloka from the gita you know these things will you know when you st- uh, see it is like it is very simple mm-hmm. there is this uh, very interesting thing garbage in garbage out the gigo principle gigo principle <laughs> when you put garbage you will release garbage so why not put good things in your life and these are small small things but they affect a lot they make you happy they make you satisfied and that is what people want isn't it that is what the youth wants the youth today is searching for happiness unhappy is satisfied unhappy running after the wrong things in life you know uh, they think that oh i will achieve this then i'll be happy but no that does not happen like this and it's like that carrot which keeps dangling in that animal Are, the more yeah, you go ahead the carrot also keeps going exactly and you become happy then you will find happiness everywhere you can spread happiness everywhere and that is why spiritual practices have become so important in today's world uh, there is so much of depression uh, there is so much suicides are uh, suicides so it's a different story altogether but there's so much of 
hatred Lone- envy loneliness people can't connect to each other even if they are sitting together they are feeling lonely <laughs> they are feeling lonely and so people are discontented you know uh, so that is why you know spiritual practices i will definitely advise that perform basic practices at least that will help a lot in improving your life i am a living example i have personally experienced so much of change in my life that uh, you know i look back and i think that uh, what i was what was i doing <laughs> why did i not do it back then so yeah because in shrimad bhagavatam pralad maharaj also laments oh okay. i couldn't do much when i was a kid and he's are ha ha lamentation when he's at the age of 5 i i remember yeah 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 <laughs> so somebody said to me oh spiritual practices are not for you no now is the time to enjoy you uh, you sleep with women different kinds of women every day you should sleep with a different woman <laughs> every day you should try beef meat all the things they should break customs break traditions try every variety of wine another person said to me you are in europe every day you should try a different wine mm. and then pralad maharaj says oh my god i am so late <laughs> 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 all right so thank you very much for being yeah. here and i hope thank the youth of india and so many other countries will definitely be delighted and once again i thank you for coming and sparing your time thank you so much thank you thank for wishing you all the best your thank birthday you. is also coming for oh, january <laughs> <laughs> i hope okay. i release this video by then so <laughs> everybody can wish him na happy birthday in advance <laughs> all right so i will stop the recording be, now it will be the best birthday gift thank you so yeah, much yeah yes Since last <laughs> year i had given you a book but this year my <laughs> bank account is not working so this will be my, <laughs> so this will be my birthday gift okay so whatever I'll you get. stop okay. the recording now okay thank you so much thank you yeah bye bye